Oh my god, it's episode seven. Oh, we're here. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my god. Uh, you made fucked it. up. It's episode eight. I can just do it again. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. okay. Just, 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 everyone, let's do it again. This won't be in. This won't be in. You can cut no, it out. Cool. Okay. Uh, uh, start over. Uh, should I just say eight and then cut it into the seven that I said so that now that's. You should do that so that it will be as seamless as possible. More so than I'll make just it as seamless. Over. So I'll, I'll record it now. So eight. Oh my God. It's episode eight. No one will know. Eight. No one will know. No what? Uh, no, yeah, hello. No, what are you talking hey, everybody. It's the episode it's there. where fresh. the thing is going to happen that, that I've been wanting to see mm -hmm. for so long. How exciting. I guess, you know, it wouldn't wouldn't be right to go into the episode without first doing a little bit of a check-in with the audience. A, a comment showcase, if you will. Oh, a bit of freestyle there. We got we got our first one here. Uh, All right. Um, even when the game came out, I thought it was hilariously unfortunate that the only person known to be immune to the fungus is gay and won't have immune children. It's, it's people like, can still have children. You're gonna have to harvest elements and and potentially be able to do that. You're gonna need a big old science team to sort that out. But um, I guess they I mean, mean no. just theoretically, yeah. Unless you go in surrogacy, I guess just standard. I'm talking way more than just one or two. You know. Go labs, get get petri dishes, get that thing sorted fully. Get loads of a horde of children that are all immune. Then again, you don't even know if it necessarily It'll be like passes. Day they have all the humans hooked up in the like the blood banks, and it's just taking blood from them. Yeah, why not? Does it necessarily pass to her children? We don't even know that that's true, right? We don't, we don't know. Maybe don't it know. does. Maybe it doesn't. But it's a fair. It's a fair thing to ask. Yes. You know, it's not an un yeah. It's a reasonable thing to ask. I'm trying to remember. They keep it a secret, even to all the people in uh, Jackson, right, Fringy? I don't recall any conversation that happens in that game that wasn't because he tells well, Tommy, she she reveals like, it to her, Dina, which means that nobody knew, right? That that was a surprise. Yeah. Um. Well, and maybe maybe Maria knows as well. Maybe. Um, maybe. It. In fact, it's probably likely that she knows, but that's it. One thing to add about the dog: they established in the first episode that dogs are aware of the infection with the old lady, so it makes sense the posse would use one. And that's true. I Dogs just, can sense evil. We've got to mention there, there is that was, scene in episode yeah. one. Um, but I don't even know why people are hung up on this one. I can just believe that the dog can smell these things. Like, I, I, I completely don't know. agree, Brie. I, I didn't realize. Why was this a big <laughs> conversation? But like, it's just funny that the show even has more setup for it than we even needed to defend that that aspect. But a lot of people. That's true. Took but now you it. have an in text. Reference. The dog defeat. looks You've sus been destroyed. about the granny, and then later the dog is like, don't go in there, human, don't. And then she's like, I'm gonna go in there, and the dog's like, yeah, it's your funeral. Interesting how so many electronic devices work so well after 20 years of inactivity and without uh, maintenance. Reminded me of Army of the Dead, where they got a whole uh, forsaken casino building running fine with a few gallons of gas. I don't know enough about it to know just how much of it would have degraded and fall apart versus stuff like that can be switched back on. Like if an arcane machine is... Well, especially if things end up getting rusty, you know. Yeah, because, like well, I'm familiar, as, as I'm assuming you guys are, like, leave batteries into a, in a thing, they, like, bleed and rust, like a... Uh, well, it's yeah. something that a lot of people don't really think about, is that the... Or maybe maybe I'm just projecting, but, like, the electronic... Like, that's that's a physical thing that exists. And the way that it works is in the physical world, like that these things don't just automatically work like perfectly all the time. Yeah. And in the case of this, right, like 20 years of not being used, not being maintained, who knows about like condensation or just like water that leaks through, like how much damage it could cause, as well as like the broad building itself, you know, like having a functional electricity, you know, system. And maybe it could have been made more impactful that the arcade is all down except for that one cabinet. And it's like, except yeah, for and, and she Mortal says, Kombat, I've yeah. been working on it. Like, I managed to get it. Yeah, that could fix. be. Yeah. And hey, maybe that's why she's in the Firefly. She's got some uh, technical skills. proficiency. Yeah. Boy, that zombie sure was stealthy until seconds before he loudly revealed himself. I'm just not a fan of the whole sequence. Uh, how much, yeah. like, could you imagine how yeah. much cooler and creeper could have been? This reminds me of It Follows. They're, like, dancing and singing and, and, or whatever and just looking away and the camera's facing so that we can just see the zombie getting closer and closer and closer and they just don't realize until it gets the easy freebie bite, which frees up, you know, get, maybe hit Riley, and then Ellie's efforts to get it off, he gets bitten too. Simple. But instead we got what we got and it's like, eh. 
<laughs> what you'd say is probably the hardest variable to have controlled for in that episode was that sequence. They didn't do it very well. Right. Yeah, it was, and they didn't do it. Yeah. Not showing what happens after they get bitten is a huge mistake for me. The scene would be too interesting to leave to the imagination with too many variables. Does Ellie kill Riley just before she turns? Does she kill her after? Does Riley kill herself so Ellie doesn't have to? Does Ellie keep her locked up and hopes for a cure? Do the Fireflies find them before they turn? Does Ellie lock Riley in a shed to play video games like Shaun of the Dead? Good reference. I think what <laughs> happened, that is a, that's a good reference. I think what happened is they look at like the ending for the episode of almost presenting it as an a sense kind of poetic like they said it would be by cutting it off of just them sitting there and then Ellie making the choice to stay and help Joel. I get that as like a thing that they would want to do but I agree with this comment. There's like there's a lot that you could pull from like well what actually happens though what what choices did Ellie make when she realized that she well, yeah, was those okay are different and traumas. Riley was deteriorating. And uh, to know which one of these things happened does kind of change what we know she's been through. Yeah, exactly. Because I, yeah, I think they're different it, enough. It's, quite, it's super, super consequential, like what choices she could have made and how they inform who she is. And to not provide an answer is like, it's not really that you're preserving a mystery. You've kind of just foregone like a really good opportunity uh, to build character. Especially, yeah, with how that episode was paced. And I feel like we could have skipped over or sped up a whole lot of it. And we missed, uh, yeah, what could have been a really super awesome thing to see how they deal with it. You could have expanded on what was in the game, you know? Yeah, exactly. Because the game doesn't provide, like, an answer either as to, like, what actually happened. I feel like they've pretty heavily implied what happened with Riley after this. This episode establishes that she has never seen a dead body before. Then, later in the timeline, she tells Joel that she has already had to hurt people after shooting that guy. She could be talking about the infected she killed under the gas station, but that particular kill didn't appear to be emotionally devastating to the point where she wouldn't talk about it later. She has also asked Joel if he ever feels bad killing an infected when he knew it was a person before. Seems pretty clear to me that Riley turned and Ellie shot or stabbed her. But while the show hasn't been the strongest in every situation, it has had a pretty constant peppering of significant character motivations and world building through questions, actions, or details in prior episodes. Refreshing! To have at least some level of detail in the writing compared to a lot of other garbage lately. That is fair, that um, it's more than likely she would have killed Riley, but I still would say that that's well worth seeing, um, but I don't know. I, I think it'd be really interesting. Well. That just adds to, yeah, it adds to that line that she tells to Joel later, you know? Yeah, like, I don't, um, I don't disagree with the comments of that that's, like, more than likely what happened, and that you could infer that from references before. I just think it's worthwhile to see that. It's a really potent character moment. Seeing that one zombie in this episode really reminded me how they are barely a factor in this world. We've had so few uh, extended encounters with them overall. Off the top of my head, it's one, the two in the museum, two, the kiss of death, three, the bloater and its horde, and four, this episode. Then there are smaller encounters like one, Bill's trap killing that one, and two, Ellie killing the trapped one. In the game, the zombies are a constant threat in almost every section, and there are always large groups of them. Even in some supposedly safe sections like uh, quarantine zones, there were always a few in some unprotected place, and it really felt like an infestation everywhere. I just don't think that this, uh, the show is doing enough to show the importance of saving the world by getting a cure. At this point, it seems uh, very rare for people to get bitten. It seems very easy to avoid most of the zombies, as long as you don't go to large cities or just stay in designated safe areas. So this is uh, an interesting point of view, because at first, I thought they were heading to the position of just like, where's, where's my zombies and my zombie show? But then they turn it around and they say, well, no, it's it's making me wonder about the importance of even getting a cure in this world. You know, like, why, why, blah, blah, blah. And I was just sitting there thinking like, oh, I thought that was kind of part of the point in uh, the game was that like how viable is a cure anyway yeah the last of us two struggles on this because if you're already infected it's over you're done it's it's safe to assume that the infected have so much brain damage yeah that that they, they're done so they can't be saved and so it's like oh well if we give you the cure you can't be infected but, like, you see what clickers do to people and bloaters. They just kill people. So, like, even if you can't be infected, it's like, well, they're still going to kill you anyway. Um, the reality yeah. is, that, like, a yeah. cure, it has some utility, sure. But, like, it, it ain't that helpful um, in this world. Yeah, yeah, you have to be bitten, but not killed not by dying. the infected that yeah. bites well, so, you. Yeah, which yeah. I imagine is probably a rather small amount of well, people. All you need to do is look at the deaths that happen in The Last of Us, like the obvious non-canonical Joel deaths. It's like, dude, he's dead. Like, <laughs> he's getting killed. Yeah, not, like he's, he's not getting infected with the hopes of being cured or anything. He's just dead. 
The, the funny thing is, though, where I thought this comment was going, I was partially inclined to agree, depending on how these last two go, it does feel like we didn't get much, um, even though there's, there's several examples to speak to. I think this is only going to go as far as a preference. I would have liked some more zombie interactions, and I'm starting I to... I would agree with you. So far, I kind of feel like I, I want to see more zombies. I do feel like they're not enough of a... When they're here, they're a big threat, but they seem to be not here a lot. My feeling has changed over the course of the season because that first encounter that they had with the two in the uh, museum, I was like, that was really cool, the show that just two of them is yeah. really scary. But we haven't had any encounters well, um, like that. The game then, has basically. loads of them, and I was just thinking to myself, like, Fine. imagine, yeah, just in the middle of an episode where they're traveling, Joel and Ellie, you have just, like, a, a subway or an area that's, like, a, a corridor-type, but it's quite big, and there's just, you know, seven infected just... Just uh, it clickers specifically, fight, and they you know? yeah, and they need to be fight. silent, and the stress of the yep. you know like don't touch anything, don't step on anything, and then you know you get your standard like oh one of them's walking right by you oh, and then you're fine, and then you step on a twig, and you're like oh, and then they both like start sprinting, and it just scenes like that. Well, it's just, like, know, we've it, had like it, it, none of them really. No, we we haven't, um, except for that first scene in the museum. Yeah. Because the next time that we saw it, it was massive hordes, which is, um, it's a bit different from the game. In the game, there's not often massive hordes. I like the things like, we've had, you know, except probably group. the Riley one. I, just, I don't know, I've got a beef with yeah, that one. Yeah, like, that one was lame. But, but I, I, I would get, have liked I, more. It, it seems like it's a, uh, because it's kind of the same with raider encounters, because the game, so much of it is encounters with raiders and encounters with infected. And they were definitely not going to be doing as many as the game does because there's no need to facilitate like combat or anything. But yeah, I guess the longer that it goes on, the more it's like, oh, there haven't been that many encounters. No, and we don't need like big blowouts like the one that we got in episode five, like all the time. That can totally be reserved for, you know, big mid season or like season finales. Yeah. And but my yeah, argument, we probably could do what's more infected. My more substantive argument for why we should have these is probably because it's another dynamic and layer for binding the two of them together, watching how they survive together and then you know the two of them helping each other out and ellie's like increasing this. competence would be good as well to see yeah. because you know she never had to deal with these encounters joel's dealt with them all the time and we could even do what we have in the games right where ellie will help by like throwing like an object to distract enemies or like throw a brick at you know somebody that they've encountered yeah, i'm really surprised we haven't seen a um, brick or a bottle being thrown and, like to distract a clicker that, that is an easy reference yeah it's, that happens easy so much reference. in the game yeah yeah but you know again so like I, like I said, it's just funny to have that thought from the first portion, but then the second portion being like, you know, I'm not even sure Kiel's going to make that much of a difference. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what we said in defense of Joel when The Last of Us 2 shat on him. Like, uh, I think it's one of the big defenses is that the notion that it will save the world as a pipe dream, and that's putting to one side the logistics of even disseminating the cure and whether the Fireflies would want to do that, considering that they're at war with the government. And then you go, yeah, they like, certainly wouldn't give it to Fedra. Just right no said, right? Like, Joel is responsible for all the deaths moving forward after what he did with Ellie. It's just like, you'd have to be incredibly naive to think that a cure would have solved the Earth's no, problems. No, well, so when, when somebody gets killed by a bloater or the Rat King, it's or a like, raider. well, or a raider, it's like, well, yeah, but the or cure, mission, like, that would have The cure would have done it? Like, it's like, no. Obviously, like, you know, the debate, it's it's kind of like a, a thing that happens a lot. Like, Children of Men, you know, was a similar thing of, like, is the, is the world even, is it beyond saving at this point? Uh, and that film's answer is no, it's not. The Last of Us is more complicated <laughs> in terms of, like, is the world the Last saving? It's like, logistic it's like, damn, man, how are you going to do it, you know? I think The Last of Us is one of the best ways to explain in a quick format the circumstances required for a person to pick one over everyone. Exactly. A person can easily be brought to that, and the thing is, the audience doesn't really disagree with him. Yeah, pretty much. Like, the general perception of Joel at the end of The Last of Us was like, yeah, cool, bro. Like, you know, you, you go <laughs> save Ellie. Like, go get her. As well, opposed it's... to like, whoa, what? Joel, you've doomed the world. I don't think that that was a common perspective about that game at all. Well, and people are worried, right, that they'll recontextualize it in this show and make him, like, obviously the villain. But it's funny because um, even in the scenario that it's absolutely certain that she'll, like, the whole world will be a utopia if she simply gives up her life and she agrees to it i can still understand a father preventing that from happening though i would say if if the show actually wanted to present like yeah the world will be good i'd be like i think that's yeah, that a bad would, right uh, in there i don't uh, think yeah, that's that a be, recognition of reality fucking, well we're almost there we have to see we're coming we're so show. close coming. to that uh that episode and there won't be any comment showcase for what the reaction is to episode nine will there nope we'll make a special uh, 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 we'll sneak like in a, a final comment showcase comment the, showcase the extravaganza Whoa. bonanza palooza no guarantees no promises. no one is no. safe 
I think my big problem is that this is just yet another episode that we don't have Ellie and Joel. If this show was 13 to 15 episodes, I am totally on board with this kind of episode. But the problem is, we only have nine. With episode three not focusing on their relationship, and episode one being primarily flashbacks and setups, we only have six episodes to have their relationship. Episode two has Tess, and Joel is very cold to Ellie, so that's even less. The next episode will most likely be the David episode, so they won't talk too much, which leaves a whopping four episodes where we can really focus on Joel and Ellie. The pacing of this show wants to be Breaking Bad or Daredevil, where we can spend time doing multiple stories. But it just isn't. We simply don't have the time. I don't know, it's just when Joel says that she isn't his daughter in the game, your heart shatters. Because you saw their bond grow for hours. When he says it in the show, I was more confused as to why he would really consider her a daughter. I guess they were together for three months, but unfortunately we don't get to see any of that potential development. I think it's being undersold a little bit here in this comment, but I still understand this perspective. And I would actually I agree that the 13 too, to 15 yeah. episodes would probably be... Like, if we knew that we had hit episode 8 out of 15, and uh, that everything had spread further and chunkier and we got more time with them, I do think that would be an improvement, yes. I do as I, well. I wouldn't scoff at more time. Yeah, I would definitely wouldn't scoff at more time. Yeah, um, it's nice to have, you know, like episode three, it's nice to have that. If I could choose with the last episode between having like more Joel and Ellie or Ellie and Riley, I, I'd rather have Joel and Ellie, you know? Um, I would have taken the full episode being Joel and Ellie with uh, her talking about what happened with Riley. Yeah, it just, I feel like we kind of, like, it feels kind of like a waste of an episode. It's not, but I feel like it, I just wouldn't have gone that route. I feel like not I think, enough um, happened for what they committed to. I, I wouldn't say it was like a waste of, of an episode. It's more that with the amount of time that you have, you didn't use that time very effectively. Like, yeah, um, the, you could have, you spent a whole you episode on this concept. More, we didn't get our yeah, you could have you could have achieved more with that concept or you could have shaved down the amount of time that was spent on that to have other material because we are getting close to the end. Like we've got two episodes left and there is something to be said about the game being longer in total than this, uh, the show is though in terms of like cut scenes to, to show time, it might be different, but I mean, that is part of the story, right? Is the encounters that you have. Yeah. Um, like it's not a clear segmenting between that gameplay and the story. Well, so and I guess if to look at stuff. the the Frank yeah. portion is developing Ellie and Joel at the same time. That's right, because not in the show, the, them sort of as a parallel. Yeah, the show's like developing a thematic element, but uh, in terms of like advancing Joel and Ellie, obviously Ellie's not in that episode much at all. It's very clear that a lot of people understandably want to see more of Joel and Ellie together, talking, doing stuff. It's the best part of the game. Yeah, I mean, arguably the best part of the show too. I would definitely yeah, yeah, that's, that's go right. down the route um, of having just more of them together. The favorite for me is still episode five because I think that was just a really solid full very package. Strong. Having yeah, um, that was really good the bouncing agree, of all yeah. four of those characters, having a villain that was pretty well understood and just a polar opposite to saw, really. a lot of what those characters are trying to run with, but also a cautionary tale. The action scene was just really fun. Of course, there were still problems mm -hmm. in the episode, but I like you know less so compared to how bad it could have gotten. And none of them, like, ruin characters or anything. And, uh, yeah, a lot of Joel and Ellie back and forth thing and stuff, and a lot of characters. Like, that, that, if we had that every episode in the season, I think it would be ready to be a hell of a lot more praise. But yes, I understand this, and um, it'll be interesting to think of the show in as a whole once we get the last two episodes done. These two episodes are kind of critical. I think these two episodes will make or break this show. You know, this will determine whether it's going to be like, yes, that was a great season of television, or damn, you like tripped up at the finish line and that like changes a lot of the material that came before, like in recontextualizing what it all led up to. If so, these uh, next two are like the last one, we could have some issue. Yeah, we're going to have some problems. If they are of the same quality as episode five, however, it'd be like, ooh, that'd be a really strong finale. And I suppose yep. the other thing that is looming over this is how are you going to change that final episode in particular? What choices are you going to be making in yeah. terms of, uh, watching, in terms of the, the ending watching. that we're leading to and the next season of television that we know is happening? And they had to have known they were going to get, like, that we're going to be entering into next.
The disappointment I have in EFAP's analysis is that they have missed a rare opportunity with this show. Going after Quantumania, Doctor Strange, MOM, basically anything Ryan Johnson writes is elementary. There are obvious issues at every turn. The Last of Us challenges us to dig much deeper. It's a perfect case study and opportunity to better understand the differences between what makes something good and what makes something great, and perhaps walk away with a greater insight on film and story in general. It is a show that mimics a game that's widely considered to be a masterpiece by most, often shot for shot and line for line. Yet people are quite divided. Many saying the show is only good, it's competent, but it is not great like the game. This can't be dismissed by it not matching preconceived expectations because the same opinion is held by a number of people who never played the game. Why is the consensus uh, so unified terrible. for the quality of the story in the game, yet not for the show? It's uncommon we get an adaptation that follows an original masterpiece so closely. It offers the same kind of opportunity as the Psycho remake, which, despite being nearly shot for shot, line for line, still fell far short of the original masterpiece. It suggests... There's more to the difference between a film that's good and a film that's great than just the story, script, cinematography, editing, and so on. There are subtle things that aren't as easily picked up on that can make all the difference between something that is good but forgotten and something that lives on eternally as a classic. We have no shortage of bad films and shows in which to point out the flaws. We have many great films and shows in which to praise. But The Last of Us gives us something much more rare. It offers an uncommon chance at comparison and insight into what makes something good and what makes something great that we may not find elsewhere and simply defending and praising this show completely squanders the real value that can be drawn from it. I appreciate that you're being, I think you're trying to be like pretty good faith here, but like, that's not a great comment, my dude. Oh. This is like reducing all of our analysis down to like simply defending and praising this show when we'd be more than willing throughout our coverage to well, I, I, offer I, I, and let Genuine criticisms. response. This feels like a comment that belongs on like a different video, I like guess, uh, or a different series of videos. Cause not only do we, I don't know if anyone else in their reactions are doing like extensive comparisons to the game and then talking about whether or not we thought uh, different parts are better or worse, even down to particular line deliveries and being like, oh, the choice to... Like, for example, we, we've talked at certain points about really tiny changes. I know I have done on Open Bar as well. Obviously, the comparison of how they did Frank. We did we did a lot on that one. It's so, what's quite baffling, as I feel like the coverage that we've been providing is much more about digging into the parts rather than the sum of its parts of like, oh, well, you know, it has this, which the game had, it has this, which the game had. Like, it's been very much like a lot of times point by point attempts at comparison what we thought was better or what we thought was worse and why it's been thorough like i don't know what to say well so and then i was going to highlight like this is we watch it and then talk about it this isn't a mola video or fringy video like on yeah, endgame exactly. or any kind of and like this deep isn't dive. A, this isn't like an efap where we've we've got like from beginning to end everything that we want to talk about in the story going point by point chronologically for hours. Every piece of media is a huge opportunity to do all kinds of things. We're going to yeah, cover it as like, is our multiverse reference. Madness, yeah, yeah I, I don't like the, the, the idea that it's like multiverse of madness is elementary. It's like, is it really elementary to like have to delve into like all of those intricate like mechanics of like the fucking, what was it? The incursions well, yeah, and I, like the Illuminati and their role in that world to like lay out in a manner that is as coherent as you can like do with that. It's film. not even easy to catch that um like when you say america chavez is assassinated by the end of the film i don't think anybody knew what i was talking about when i like decided finally caught that from several digs she has the power <laughs> to save her parents whenever she wants it's like that's something that's insane but lo most people don't catch yeah, that like do you feel like the majority of people who watch that film would be like yeah i mean obviously like that's elementary my dude like yeah of course that's that's a problem with that film and then uh ryan johnson films they're actually difficult to untangle well heaps of people love those movies and think that they're brilliant and then and saying like you know simply defending and praising the show it's like we don't this is like a, re a live reaction essentially that's just recorded here you well, know but, it's but just like i, just, I, I, I want to make it clear but... we are not just defending and praising the show that's not true that's just no, false. that's not what's happening and especially if this was the comment on last week's episode how could you possibly say that? We that's, thought that that's our most like disliked episode. We, as in, we, we went into <laughs> why we thought it was flawed, and we explain what our did, defenses did, are, why well, we think what in, we think, and how we got there. That was the episode where I laid out exactly why I think the game is better than the show, and I did like visuals to try to help support the points about pacing, characters, relationships, and like choice of. I don't know, what whatever dramas happen, events happen. Like, I don't understand. This comment just feels like it belongs somewhere else. It's because it's their new favorite shiny toy. They wouldn't be getting flamed in their comments if they were upfront and honest about their bias towards the show. It's honestly entertaining watching their audience pushing back against them. Well, Boom. I'd say that our new favorite shiny toy was Dead Space. Uh, oh, yeah. More so than the last yeah. <laughs> Ragnarok um, before that. 
oh, and yeah. Ragnarok. Well, yeah, that was the first thing I kind of wanted to say. It's like we like this show, but I don't think yeah, any like of it. us love it. I don't love it. No, no, I'm not. I'm not there yet. I, I don't, I don't love it yet. No, yeah. I like if, it. I think it's good. I think it's better than than it's getting credit for in uh in certain circles. I think Secondly, so. I find it amusing about this. I wonder if this commenter. I don't know if they know the history of EFAP. This Are is like our. Here? This is like our 150th time we fight our audience. We do it all the time. Well, like, yes, I, I think is, uh, if, look at it, this it's is a common occurrence. their audience, the way that this is framed is, is uh, the, he's not a part of the I audience. I get it. Doesn't seem audience. Himself as part yeah. of the audience. Yeah. Because the uh, audience but, pushing but again, back. It's like, man, time. I can't think of a single other time that might have happened. Uh, you know what else is mm -hmm. kind of funny? I'm just thinking about the comment above, right? All this evidence, they, they use the fact that people are quite divided on the show, saying it's good and bad, and that with, uh, you know, understanding why people don't like it, right? It goes beyond editing cinematographers are so close just like this applies to everything and um we've always taken a stance pretty much there's, there's it's rare we come across a film or a tv show or a game where we just go no opinions on that whatsoever and whenever we do that means we've we've pretty much gone in opposition to anyone else who thinks the opposite which happens a lot seriously a large amount of time <laughs> like i knew people were disappointed to find out like i didn't think much of uh banshees of inner sherrod they were like oh it's like i was like well yeah yeah that's probably gonna be an unpopular take because this mcdonough's films are always really really well received and and the reason i, I bring I, that I, up oh, is just that's yeah. the most recent controversial take i've had i think yeah, and how many is that this year already, you know? Well, like, and the, the best part is, tapes. I've got, like, 20, 30 of them cooking that you guys don't even know about yet. <laughs> mm, they don't know, they ain't ready yep. for some of them. And also, I just see, they wouldn't be getting flamed in their comments if they were upfront and honest about their bias towards the show. Well, I mean, we were pretty upfront about our bias against the show going yeah. into it. <laughs> oh yeah, for ages before the show came out, from the moment it was announced, we went, uh-oh. Brace it's yourself. always been. Mm, I did. Uh, I don't understand. I did the same uh, thing with. If you watch me and Nidrotic's House of the Dragon reason. coverage, in the first few episodes, I just admit I'm biased against this show. I kind of hate it. And it's like, yeah. it's, it's really mean that you hate it because it's good. It's just like, yeah, well. And I was just like, that's just reality. But it completely won me it's over. I can't human. say that this isn't the same thing where I went from being like, yeah, this show's probably not going to be very good to being like, okay, this is this is good. I find it interesting, right, that they said like this was the, the chance for you guys to talk about the difference between like good and great. And then I was thinking about all the discussions we've had across these episodes, and I feel like that's what that is. When we talk about like these smaller things. And also, also yeah. we've done that before. Like, I'm not really sure why we're just talking about Marvel movies like you know that we've covered more than marvel movies right well yeah oh it was just the last what was our coverage of underwater if not like this is an interesting example of an okay to good movie yeah and then we talked about what could have made it great Mm -hmm. And then, of yeah, course, the many it. examples of films where it's like, so this is like, you know, mediocre or it's sliding into bad territory, but it's not like anywhere near, you know, like the absolute dregs of like what you can, you know, get with storytelling. You, we like, talked when discussing MOM what could have made that great. Because you can, with every single yeah. Marvel movie that comes out, they st they still can be great. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like you missed a lot of uh, a lot of the coverage that we've done, like, in general. It's kind of the implication of us saying, we think this show's good. Here are the ways we think it you know, messes up or makes mistakes. That's kind of the distinction between good and great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The implication yeah, exactly. is if they didn't have those mistakes or they made the improvements that we suggested that it might elevate it to great. Yeah, I, I do not understand the basis for people like this guy saying that, because when he says favorite shiny toy, I think he's saying like you're playing favorites and I don't see what the basis is for saying that you're playing favorites. I mean, after The Last of Us Part Two, I'd say you're probably all expecting it to be not be very good, like you said. But I don't know. Do they think that you're tied to one of the actors, like Pedro oh, or something, because you praised him in Mandalorian or something? We, we or, went over this last episode. The best they could do is you like it, and that's your bias. It's like. Man. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I do like it, but I don't know that that's like what are we trying to ascribe here in terms of like a bias stemming from liking something. Am I biased because I like Ratchet and Clank, and then I also say that the games are great? It's like, well, you would, you're biased, you like it. It's like, which comes first, that it's great and therefore I like it, or what? You know, like it's yeah. How, it makes how me think they like... forgot our Last of Us Two coverage. I appreciate the corrections on a couple of the earlier comments we've looked at, and some highlights of uh, other realities, things that we can agree disagree. This was just 
just one of the examples of a greater criticism. I don't really know what to do with this because, like, most of what it's asking for, I feel like we've been doing. So, you know, I guess we'll carry mm, on. We, I'm pretty sure we mentioned it last episode. Just an example. We love just examples. one. Too. Just one. At least well, the person you know who brought up the Ragnarok dog was like, "Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's a terrible example. example but yeah. like, at least you tried." But and it is. Brought up at least example. they tried. Yeah. We can, we can grapple with it. We can at least explain. Well, you know what, Bringy? Last comment. We do have an example. It's kind of funny how Mola says you can easily make a headcanon about this uh, plot problem. So I guess now it's fine if you have to do the writer's work for them. Wasn't that supposed to be a sign of how the show isn't that competent if you have to come up with your own headcanon? I need to cue that oh. scene from Infinity War. What, the face um, that he makes? Or... Where he's just... He just can't believe it. So um, just, I almost yeah. want to like reflexively be like, oh God, no guys, no, 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 no. We don't want everything explicit. That's where my mind's gone to straight away. You know, like um, yes. that? we, we, we yes. want a lot of our favorite scenes of all time will be characters just looking at something or expressing something or even taking an action. And we all get to discuss why they did it, right? Because like, I mean, just, this is just one of them uh, teachable opportunities, I suppose. If you can see there's 21 replies, plenty of people know exactly what the difference is. But, but some people don't, so we can go over it. First and foremost, one can mm -hmm. headcanon literally anything ever whenever they want. They can if they want to. You can. Um, to go to an extreme, if someone said, like, um, I love that, you know, Homer Simpson is actually an alien. That, that, that if you watch the whole show, it just makes way more sense. Be like, okay, I don't think much of anything really supports that, and most people aren't going to accept it. It's like, that kind of headcanon, it's like, yeah, you can do that. But headcanon refers to way more than just that. And, so, and not all headcanon is created equally to be excessive about this, all right? Why did Vader attack the Emperor at the moment that he did in Return of the Jedi? It's like, if we're all discussing this just after I've watched it, we go, well, because Luke is about to die. He's, he's, he's literally about to die. Or, or maybe because Luke says, um, I think he says, Father, please, among many other quotes. And that reminds him of, of a duty as a father to protect his son. Be like, what else? He's like, uh, well, he loves Luke. And he just can't stand to see him in pain. That's, you know, just like that. It's like, what about finally seeing the Emperor as the monster he truly is and he has to stop yeah. him? Like, what about he just, he's decided this is it. I've, I've had enough. I, I have to stop the galaxy from suffering and this is how I can do it. It's like, you could, you could pick all of them or any of them, really. I don't really, like, if someone said, no, he's not thinking about the galaxy when he does that. And you're like, eh, you know, maybe not. Maybe, though. It's kind of hard to say. And if I said, yeah, you can kind of headcount whatever you want there, what I'm referring to is out of those options. If someone said, well, no, Vader did it because he really likes fireworks and he wanted to throw the Emperor down there and see him explode because it'd be funny. Like, that's that's why he did it. It's like, um... And then he's like, no, no, no. repressed. He thought lifting the Emperor up would power him up. Uh, he didn't realize he would die from that. He was hoping he'd live. And it's like, okay... And someone else is like, oh, well, you know, this is where they play fight, and this time it went too far. And the thing about the first set that I went through is that all of them are supported, and none of them contradict anything in the text, I would say. Meanwhile, the later ones I just mentioned, all of them contradict what comes after, so they can't fit. They, they cannot be... You could headcanon it for yourself, but you can't, like, headcanon it in a way that it can match the world. It can slip right in and actually work. Maybe you could call it soft headcanon and hard headcanon, something like that. But this would apply to multiple sort of things. Like, why does any character do anything? Uh, well, we watched it recently. Why did, why did Elsa try to grab the Holy Grail at the end of The Last Crusade? It's like, she wanted youth forever. She wanted the power. She just considered it so fucking precious. She just wanted to have it for herself. Like, the greed or whatever. You're like, okay, yeah, it could be any of them. It could be all of them. And then someone said, well, because obviously she wanted to lick it and then she could fly away. That's, that's how that works. It's the power you get from it. Like, no, I don't think that's true at all. And I don't think anything supports that. And I think that's insane. I don't think you, if that yeah, were and true. Then, and then, of course, like, in that example, the converse of, like, a bad argument would be, it's insane that she would even try to do that. She's going to slip and die. So why would she ever, like, try to do that? It's like, well, you need to think about who she is. Yeah. And, you know, what she values. So it works both ways. Well, that's a great example. If you said, like, far to yeah, she's killing herself by doing that. And you go, yeah, but that's how much she wants it. And then you're like, so that's just headcanon. When does she ever say, I really want this? Let's go with the counterexample that they're probably referencing from my uh, TLJ videos. Why didn't Holdo tell Poe the plan? Like, well, back when that was all happening, right, the first thing that people said was, like, she doesn't like him, and he keeps, like, asking for information so brazenly, especially after causing such a fucking disaster. You remember? He got all the fleet destroyed. What an asshole. Like, okay, fine. I accept that. That's the reason. Let's talk about it. Had he not done it, everyone would now be dead. And we can go through all the details on that, but that's just true. And most people are like, oh, yeah, okay, when you explain how it all works. And it's like, also, Leia could have stopped him at any moment during that whole battle, but she doesn't. Like, that's 
strange. She outranks him. And I'm pretty sure there's an admiral on board that outranks him too. So why are we all blaming him when we could easily have outranked and stopped him at any point? Especially because all the people in that... Do you remember, like, they're Already all communicating and they're all very happy? They're all like, you know, I'm here, Poe, let's do it, you know. And it was all planned. And uh, Leia's, like, suggesting yeah, they were cut in formation it off. and everything. Exactly. They were already there. They launched, pri they launched prior. They were already on their way. You saw how slow those fucking things are. And so this this starts to fall apart. You're like, is that why? Because that doesn't really make sense. And she likes Poe. She, she, like, smiles at him and so he's like a it. good dude and yeah it's like, I, 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 she literally tells leia you know i really like him and so then you have people being like uh fine no okay, uh she thought he's a mole she thought he was a mole there you go and a lot of people started parroting that because it's like yeah that makes sense there you go and it's like there's nothing that supports that and there's only something small that contradicts it so where are you getting that from and it's sad because like it kind of would be an interesting plot point right if either uh holder was the mole or hux had like you know sent well, over no. false information about how poe was a mole and that there was just a question of his loyalty and that it caused severe friction on the ship you know something like that none of it's in the film none of it no, there's no reference to moles there's no reference to anything to do with like a distrust of poe in that direction there's just nothing and it's like yeah but it you know if it were that way if hux maybe did fuck around with them or if maybe she is maybe she is a mole whatever works for you and it's like no none of it's working you can't there is no head cannon that makes all of that work unfortunately other than maybe if you say well holdo was uh she was hit with like a mind scanner from an alien that happened to be in the area that shot her through like the walls to make her unreasonable that's my head cannon when um it's like what we hadn't uh we hadn't talked about it in a while because it hasn't really popped up as an issue but it used to a while back this element of us trying to be objective and how that was often misconstrued or misunderstood as us saying that we're searching for some element of absolute truth or that we can't possibly be wrong in our search or, or in our the process of being objective and the headcanon talk it, it it's similar in a way where your headcanon can be wild and nonsensical and completely made up and have no references or not be based on anything that's actually in the material or it could be supported by a vast amount of lines and scenes and what we understand about characters and the plot and the mechanics of the world and so when your head cannon is really, really, really in line with what's actually in the material, I think it's it has its most merit. This was an issue with uh, one of the last videos that I did regarding Obi-Wan Kenobi's death in A New Hope, where I think that Obi-Wan Kenobi, when he notices that Luke is watching him fight Vader, that's when he decides to let Vader kill him, partially, I believe, or, to a great deal, so that it helps to motivate Luke to do what he couldn't do and kill Vader and stop the Emperor, uh, the Emperor and the Empire. It's not explicitly said in the film, but based off the timing and the expression and the stated goals that Obi-Wan has for Luke and, you know, speaking to him as a Force ghost, I think that even if this is headcanon, I, I guess maybe it is, I don't know. I think it's really, really strongly uh, supported by the events in the film. So that's just a recent example for me with a different other part of the media. It might just be the sticking point of using the term headcanon because it's like ex so. explicit and non-explicit information and how you control the use of it. With all of that being said, it's like, why does the dog look like inquisitive or kind of tilted at a person and then he's chill with them a little bit later? Well... Dogs are animals that have all kinds of emotional states for all kinds of reasons. We've never met this dog before, and all we know is that it's a sniffer for the cordyceps stuff. He could change his approach based on really anything. Uh, the, 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 any smells coming from any location could make him change expressions briefly or behaviors. He could change it based on the height of the person he's walking up to, the, the weight of them, sex, clothing, smells that come from them directly that don't even relate to cordyceps. Could be he's tired in that moment and he's just like waking back up. Could be there's something in the distance he saw. Could be he doesn't like the feel of the cold out of his paws on the floor. Maybe he needs to pee could be hungry maybe the sun is in his eyes in a bit of an awkward angle he doesn't like the cut of everyone's jib perhaps i could go on but the point is in return of the jedi and the last crusades instances you could infer a lot of reasons for vader or elsa's decisions but you can't go much further than what has support you can't you can't go so far outside of it that it starts causing contradictions right in The Last Jedi, you can't actually pick a motive that can fit with the story unless you start to build up other story elements that literally aren't there. But even then, I those will that. like eventually contradict, and so they, they can fuck it up too. The Last of Us, you can pick one of a hundred reasons the dog can give an expression. I can't even believe I have to explain that. Like It could be any fucking reason, is my point. You're welcome to pick. 
It literally changes nothing about anything. It could be any of them. Until we get more information about this dog, see more examples of how he sniffs people, or whatever, we can't even base a consistent attitude. We saw what we saw. There could be any countless reasons for this to happen. Hence why I said, headcanon whatever you want. And I find it really bizarre that we call this a plot problem. It's not a problem. The dog can look a different way and then a different way. That is totally possible. Dogs can do this. Rags, can you please confirm? Definitely. 100%. Every time. Always. What you can't do is say that the dog was apprehensive at first because he's actually a dog mech that's being driven by Joel from the future and that he's come back in time <laughs> in the dog to protect because he killed the real dog that would have bitten and t torn apart Ellie. And instead, he's driving that dog to protect her in that moment. Because then we'd be like, well, whoa, 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 whoa. If that's Joel and the dog, what? He, t sorry, time travel's possible. Like, <laughs> of all the things he could be doing, he chose to do that. That's completely incoherent. It can't work at all. Meanwhile, the one that's incredibly simple and has a thousand options, you can go nuts. I don't Should hopefully... have been a whole episode setting up the dog. It's raised from, from yeah. a pup. And then it sets up like, this is why it can smell these things. And then... Yeah, how did he get trained? We didn't even get to see any of his training. It was as well, like, as I was, like, to the first reaction I had. It's just like, yeah, we don't want to lose this, by the way, guys. Because it takes away subtleties from performances or even events. It's fun to dig into why characters feel a certain way or they yeah. take whatever actions they take. We don't need everything to be explicit. But at the same time, you need to be able to draw something. That was the big problem with Holdo. No one could figure out why she did it. Yeah, because it just didn't it didn't make sense. You looked at the material, and you're like, what, why? Why, though? I'm trying to figure it out. What am I supposed to do? An example I was thinking of, if I'm thinking of headcanon correctly, is um, in Breaking Bad Season 4, you know, when Brock gets poisoned in some way. There's a number of things that could have happened, and we don't need to know exactly which one of them it was. And it's not exactly in, laziness on the writer's part well, i mean they deliberately omitted it because you could have the big reveal and sinister implication at the end of that finale where it's like oh walt did it somehow you know the hyper simplistic example of this whole headcanon thing is a character is in one location and then they're in another one it's like well how did they get there it's like they drove probably well, they used which, their teleportation that. machine like, that they yeah. which, like, their i'm very yeah, glad exactly no, right we need to yeah. see them drive <laughs> I'm very yeah. glad you used that example because this has come up several <laughs> yeah. times over time. I was about to say annually, and you know what? I might commit to like more than annually, where people in our audience will ask us, and we actually answered this question on a Super Chat Catcher semi-recently that we recorded, what is the difference between a reasonable inference and just making shit up for the story? And this goes all the way back to EFAP episode, I want to say two or three, can't remember, where we talked about shut up about plot holes, where Patrick... Willem said, it is perfectly yep. reasonable to infer exactly what Batman did to get from the hole to Gotham. When um, that would be an example of where is the line between we need more information and we have enough information, that's probably yeah. the best example ever where it just crosses it as far as I'm concerned. Yes, he is Batman, yes, he's Bruce Wayne, but we've been told he's bankrupt. He has basically like no contacts at this point. He's an incredibly broken man. He's in the middle of nowhere and Gotham's on lockdown and he has a time limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess there may be a one in a million way he could probably do this, I guess, but like, good God, you owe us. There are a lot right. of variables for which saying nothing is like, hmm, I don't know if that's good enough as opposed to yeah. a character is in their house and then they got like i don't need to see homer drive to work like i know how he got there he used his car like but if it's, homer's it's in space simple. you might be like well wait yeah or what? like if it was in a medieval world and it's like <laughs> you you teleported from one kingdom to another it's like well damn man like how long has it been you know like how long did it take you to get from one location to another it's all it's it's a blurry line but there is a line and it's all about reasonable inferences versus, a, you know, writing the story for the writer. I didn't expect mm -hmm. this to come up with the dog's expressions, though. No, I, I can't believe that the dog is <laughs> this one that is causing this these is problems. Stickler, like, yeah. why is it so hard to believe that a dog can smell like an infection? <laughs> it's, not, it's not that. It's that the dog looked kind of shifty and then he was okay with Ellie. That was what was yes, brought up as an inconsistency. Yeah, let's microanalyze the expressions that animals make all the time. That's what I mean. I, that, that, hence, that's what I said. I was like, head cat of whatever the hell yeah. you want. He's thinking about whatever the hell you want. And then it's just like, wow. So we're just going to wow, head cat of the right, plot the problems away. Head catting the dog's clear fluctuations and inconsistencies. 
It's a dog. You can think whatever you want as long as it doesn't contradict any information you've been given before. That's kind of where mm -hmm. we sit on this. Was Vader partially informed by his his rush to kill the Emperor because he needed to pee? It's like, I guess that doesn't contradict anything. <laughs> and it's possible. <laughs> this is taking too long, Emperor. I'm gonna throw you off so I can do it. Oh, no, I'm dying. No, oh, now I guess I'm I'll just pee it. in my suit. <laughs> this is no <laughs> Um, now, uh, what I will say is this will come up again, and we'll talk about it again some other time. It could be half a year, it could be months from whenever, I don't know. It's just that there will be times where people feel like we are owed more information, and we will feel the, the opposite, or vice versa. It is possible. So, uh, hopefully that helps you understand. And so, takes us to the episode. There's that pensive music. Is this pensive? Um, I think so. There's a bit of that. Yeah. What do you think is the dominant emotion of this this theme? Uh, um, melancholy. I'd be inclined to agree on that. I think it's like a mix. It, it's very sort of neutrally. Um, like you could put it on the many kinds of different things. Like it could be on a a montage where someone's like working on a project, maybe, but they're fr a little bit frustrated. Like someone's died. And so they're trying to finish up a project that was personal to the person who died, perhaps, or someone's discovering, making a making a bit of a sinister discovery, like mm. a detective at a crime scene looking for clues. Like Batman. Yeah. Right. Snow. Oh. We predicted there would be snow because we saw snow last time. Look at that wide shot. Really That's a nice shot. Water. That's real water they got there. And I saw a whale <laughs> and a new earth. actual snow. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Uh oh. The tabernacle of God. Tabernacle's a funny is word. With men. The tabernacle of God is with me. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. They could do this in an actual church if they wanted to, right? I do uh, maybe how, they don't have one. How exactly they would scout out all the different places they want, or how much they'd want to keep it close to the game or not. That guy was in El Camino. You're right, he was one of the cops, right? Or the fake cops. Uh, the, yeah. The guy in the shootout, the other guy. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Ah, and you're crying, and it's so no funny. Neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither will there be any more pain. What a great deal. Yeah. Good. Is he gonna eat her in this scene? Om hey. Om nom nom. This could be, they might have adapted the non-cannibal version. <laughs> when can we bury him? The ground is too cold to dig. Oh, we don't bury people here, bud. Oh, There's Troy, Troy. That was Troy? That's the ground Rags, is that is Joel. Wow. I hope he does his Joel voice in the show. But for now, so, he gonna be frozen. Sure. We may as well yeah. uh, acknowledge the elephant in the room that... Um, there is a bit of a twist in the game. You discover this group eat human meat. Oh my I, goodness gracious. And I imagine that that's already what they're implying with those looks after, you know, burying a body. It's like, I'm assuming maybe the community itself doesn't know. Mm -hmm. mm, that's because uh, in the game, they're all, uh, they're, yeah. they're all happy to eat uh, humans. Oh, I guess they're dealing more with the logistics mm -hmm. then of like, they have a supply of food, but then occasionally they do this. Could be, yeah. Uh, and they mix it in. Josiah and Martin think they spotted some deer the other night, a couple miles east. He is not doing the Joel voice. Disappointing. Zero out of ten. Well, so it makes me wonder, could you guys have bought him as Joel in this? He's uh, not quite no. old enough, I think. You can age him up a bit. I think the build isn't quite right, yeah, but yeah, I agree. maybe he could uh, do something about that. I don't know, as an actor. I feel like this is indicative of the strengths of video games, do. like... You can have somebody who's got the right voice and they can match, you know, the yeah. physicality in terms of movement and everything. But yeah. even if they don't quite look like what you want them to, it's like, well, it's a video game. You can create an yeah. original person. It's getting intense with that now, especially with the uh, Christopher Judge and Kratos, right? Kratos, yeah. So much physical acting. At this point, it's like voice actor doesn't really cover it. Voice actor is kind of downplaying how much they have to do like with that role over how much time and yeah. physically embodying the character. Yeah. No slight against Troy on my part. I think that guy does a fucking amazing job doing the voice in it's the game. Like, oh, he yeah, does. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very, he's very good. 
And uh, it looked like what we were establishing there is that uh, David's got control through the Bible, at least somewhat. And he doesn't the want Bible. people. I wonder if what they're going to try and set up here is that because Joel is near to death, they'd rather actually kill him and, and use him for meat rather than the person who was part of their group. Maybe that'll be the dynamic. Like, who are you with? Because they're not part of our group. So this would be a better trade for us. Mm. Could Maybe. go any direction. You never exactly know. Yeah. Here's a cracker for when you wake up. <laughs> it's a little reward for... It'd be so unfortunate cut. if he rolls slightly and it falls onto the floor and he's like, can't eat it now, it's on the floor. Uh, she gets a straw from upstairs and she says, you need to suck up oh, those crackers. Oh, she's gonna go... Or is she... I wonder if she's gonna find a uh, bow. Well, she, I, I think the idea there is she's gonna go hunt something, right? Yes, but I wonder if they're gonna... Right, so no bow though. I mean, yeah. I mean, especially considering if, if you have never... If you have not shot a bow before it no i mean of course in the in the yeah. game she uses a, a bow yeah i was half expecting for the episode to open on the shot with the rabbit where the arrow goes through oh it. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the cutest fucking thing i've ever seen in my entire life the bow, the bow implies, like, the fact that she's super proficient with that sort of implies a massive amount of time that she's been taking care of him. Like, it's been Ex a while. Exactly, um, yeah. Whereas here, it's seemingly more condensed because we haven't had the autumn section. We we went straight to winter. Right. Yeah, actually, if I was to guess, I don't actually, I wouldn't know where to begin in terms of if, if it's been, could even have been just a week, maybe, or even less. It was like, it, it, yeah, it hasn't necessarily been long, which... I wonder. Ah, ah. fuck that rabbit up! Oh, look at that rabbit. You can tell it's cold too by her face. She's actually be very, out. very, very they're, quiet. Yeah, they're clearly out in the. <laughs> That's yeah, a good reference. But yes, you can tell that they're actually shooting out in a cold area. Come on, Ellie, get it together. Yeah. Also, don't get lost. <laughs> Like, seriously, don't get lost. Getting lost is bad, I will actually I'll give you that. Getting lost yeah. is real bad, yeah. Well, there's the footprints. She can use that to get back. Clicking continues in brackets, excuse me. Clicking. <laughs> <gasps> it's a dur. Dear, Where I my dur, a dur. It might not be real, but if you kill it, it turns into actual meat. Oh, like in Age of Empires. Shoot that deer. That's an easy shot. You it's got cute this. deer, though. It's... Oh, nice shot. Decent ish. Don't worry, it'll bleed. You follow it. Should have shot it in the brain. You shot right through the fucking face. <laughs> Idiot hunter doesn't yeah. aim yeah. to kill, instead, aims uh, to make sure they I just love these hit. environment awesome. shots. The, I love that they've actually gone out to shoot in these really beautiful locations. In yep. Monte. Oh, schnitzel. I don't see anybody. Don't! Drop your rifles! Now! Who's there? Come out! Hello? We just want to talk. Turn and face me. Slow. Any sudden moves, I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for Buddy Boy. Any sudden moves, and I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for Buddy Boy over there. What do you want? You're quite a hunter. We didn't even hear you coming. Turn around and walk away. Okay. Just go. Name's David. This here's my friend James. But from a larger group. Women, children. I, I won't say it twice. Please, just ten seconds. My name is David. This is my friend James. We're all very, very hungry. So am I. We're from a larger group, women, children, and we're all very, very hungry. So am I. Women and children. All very hungry too. Well, uh, I'm from a large group too. Also hungry. Maybe we could uh, trade you for some of that meat there. What do you need? We're not asking for charity. We we can trade you for some of the deer. We have. What do you need? We have weapons, ammo, clothes, medicine, medicine, like for infections. We do. Do you have any antibiotics? We do. Back at the camp. You're welcome to follow us. I'm back not following you anywhere. Back in our village, you're welcome to follow us. I'm not following you anywhere. Buddy boy can go get it. Buddy boy can go get it. He comes back with what I need. 
The deer is all yours. Anyone else shows up... You put one right between my eyes. That's right. He comes back, you get half the deer. Anyone else shows up, I put, one, put right one right between... between my eyes. That's right. Two bottles of the penicillin in a syringe. Make it fast. Go on. Bring back two bottles and a syringe. It's not code, James. Do as I said. Drop your rifles! He's trying to yeah. pitch your voice down to seem more intimidating. We didn't even hear you coming. Turn around and walk away. It's not quite okay, Batman, but it's a little bit okay, deeper. All I ask is 10 seconds. Put the weapons down. I won't say it twice. Please, just 10 seconds. Yeah, my she's overcompensating David. like crazy. This is my friend James. Medicine? Like for infections. We do. No, no, not that yeah, infection. Yeah, really, like He comes back, you get half the deer. Anyone else shows up? I put, put one, one right, right between... between my eyes. I don't know, okay. Troy doesn't seem convinced, does he? Some penicillin. Yeah, he's, uh... Yeah, this is kind of like they've done it throughout the season. It's it's close. It's not quite one-to-one, -one, but it's close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair number of parallels. Ten steps back. The blocking is pretty much one-to-one. -one. <laughs> he slips, seven, like, oh, whoa, 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 that was 11, damn it. That's why you're out here on your own? Hey, not well, bad. Like, uh, yeah, like mm, you good. It's a four mile round trip back to our settlement. It's going to be a while before James gets back. I have some oil and matches in my pack. We could take shelter, start a fire. I wonder if they're going to do the encounter. Go. I do not know if they want to spend that kind of time on it. I'd like to see it. Well, I think that would be the one opportunity to introduce some infected in this episode. I don't expect them to do it at any other point point well because even if it gives you a small it gives you more of a reason to I push them warm. back in the direction of the settlement gives david more of a reason yeah, to yeah, you know well if they do it i hope they give more of a reason yeah, it's kind of random in in the game well, then just like... just a sudden infected Yeah. So, <laughs> so what's your name? Well, in the game, it establishes some sense of trust between the two characters, right? Strangers, I know. Yes. Yeah, like, a little bit. There's room for you in our group, if you want. You're inviting me to your hunger club? Thanks. Uh. It's true. <laughs> We're hungry. We're still here. I'm a decent man. Just That's what decent men say. That's also what people lying say. If they're not actually decent, if they're just pretending to be decent. Yes. This is true. That's the conundrum. Yes. Is this some weird cult thing? I am a preacher, but just pretty standard Bible stuff. What? The whole world ended and you still believe that shit. <laughs> I actually started believing after the world ended. <laughs> I was about to say that might have bolstered their beliefs, to be honest. Math. Yeah. Well, I found God after the apocalypse, which is either the best time or the worst time to find him. Hard to say. But when the Pittsburgh QZ fell in 17, I left with a few others, and that's how I ended up with our flock. A long way from Pittsburgh. <laughs> the That's a nod yeah, to the game for we'd sure. Settle somewhere and then raiders would come, mm. so we'd move again. Just like those fucking raiders, they're, they're like ants, and they're just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only well, luck had to run up sooner or later. Hmm? Luck? No such no, thing. Divine no providence. I believe everything happens for a reason. Sent four of our people to a nearby town to. To scavenge what they could. Well, oh, they those are the guys at the university. Well, I was about to say, you should be able to yeah. notice and the numbers there. Taken from. Turns out he was murdered by this crazy man. And get this, he's a crazy man traveling with a little girl. That crazy man was traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. You see? Everything happens for a reason. James, lower the gun. I do question both in the game and here why he said this to her. Everything happens yeah. for a reason. It's so like... James, lower the gun. Yeah, but look, his eyes are a little bit unhinged, see? Yeah. <laughs> she, kill Alec, didn't she? she didn't kill anybody. Lower the gun. Is he saying it so we have context for that bullet of gutter there? Did you bring the well, I like that he's trying to gain her trust yeah, by taking the opportunity to tell the guy to lower his yeah. gun. And I guess like you could argue Ellie sees him. he's explaining how much he has reason to kill her, but he won't. He's like, I'm chill. I'm being nice. Yeah. I know you're not with a group. You won't survive for long out there. I can protect you. Free deer. Woohoo. Actually, yeah. one free. On paper, 
he seems like a nice man, but there's just those little tells. Yeah, he's, he's just got evil looking. He's got an evil, you know, look in his eye there. No offense to the actor, <laughs> but oh, well, you look actually, evil. yeah, I, I even would respect the actor for that. The end no, of that I, delivery I, I was like, like was good yeah, in terms exactly. of just being the unsettling. Oh, the has been good so far. Yeah. Yeah, I think the acting's great so far. You get that in him, Stephen. Judging from that, how long do you think it's been? I do not, not know. Long. Doesn't look like it's been long. Where the fuck do I put it? You gotta get a... In the eye. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew what the nature of doing that is. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, actually, like, I, I genuinely know. have no idea medically. It I have no idea if this is... I don't know if all the doctors out there are nodding or cringing. Yeah, I guess we'll find out <laughs> in the next comment showcase. In that situation, wouldn't it be best to find a vein in the forearm? I don't oh, I know. I, 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 I genuinely don't know. what the medicine actually does or where you would apply it. It's antibiotics, right? It's penicillin? Apply directly to the forehead. Or like in the thigh or something, I don't know. Well, because I presume it's because the wound might be infected. Right, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know if that's... It, I assume it's viable because, holy fuck, what a mistake if it's not, you know? Well, it makes sense for Ellie to decide, well, I'll just stick it in where it hurts. For Joel, I guess, where the wound is. Well, yeah, specifically to combat infection from that wound, so that's why she's done it, but I just want to know, you know, medically speaking, what would happen if right. you do that. Yeah. If they're by the water, could they, like, fish and stuff? Is that a thing that they could do? All the fish got infected, Rags. Oh, there's zombie fish. Zombie fish. <laughs> there's a bloat of fish out there. Just going... yeah. Is this going to be gross? You ever seen Piranha Double D? It's like that. Piranha Double D. Which one is that? Is that, like, the third, fourth? I can't remember. It's a, or it's a three double D, I think, because it's three D. That ain't venison. As well venison. as having lots of tits. That ain't venison. Mellet, it's not it's human. venison. It's imagine she like takes it, just bite out of it, and just goes, "This is human, dude. What the fuck?" <laughs> Yo, this is yeah. <laughs> I know oh, human. Man, this is gonna be a like... chunky ass meaty stew. Jeez, you know, only cut that up a little smaller. Especially to make it last too, right? Yeah. They gonna come in dragging the deer? See, when we're in need, he shall provide, and and Jeebus provided them a deer. Thanks, Jeebus. I call the antlers. Why though? It's okay to celebrate. If you've heard a rumor, oh. yes, when the sun rises, I'll lead a group out to pick up her trail. Oh, okay. Sun. So I just realized something. Follow it's pretty dumb. They man. sent four raiders with no fucking the guns when justice. they all have guns here. Right, as as they I all had clubs and stuff. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, that's just stupid, isn't it? And if they had, they probably would have gotten Joel. So. How did they find out that they fa met the two? Uh, well, I'm guessing Troy Baker Told? said something maybe when he came back. Oh. Oh, jeez. That's not nice. Is this a God thing? God wouldn't want us the to The Bible do that. says That's... I gotta slap you when you're out of line. I was gonna say, like, wh before David slapped a child, why do they all seem to dislike David? Is because they all suspect that he's <laughs> lying to them about where the food's coming from? I thought it might be that, but I think it's just... I thought it was that too, but it's just a bit just disturbing. Be the and also, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think you don't have a father anymore. But you can still get fucking slapped, so watch yourself. <laughs> oh no, is he about to say it's me? Or is he talking about Jeebus? Oh, he means him. Listen, the problem with this guy is that he doesn't just eat other people. He's, he's got the other thing. Well, it's just the whole... This whole group is unsettling. There's just like a sort of cloud hanging over them. Yeah. yeah. Especially compared to Jackson, where everything seems pretty chill. Yeah, I want to live in Jackson. I don't want to live here. I, that's one thing I quite like about the encounters throughout the story of The Last of Us, which they've done in the show as well. Is that there's all these different people. kinds of people, yeah. It's not even a happy cult. It's one of those well, sad, miserable cool. cults. <laughs> so you get like the worst of both worlds. Well, I don't know if we're meant to get the sense that they're all off kilter or they're just all kind of mad at David I for some that. reason. My sense right now is just that they kind of fear him a bit. Right. Because he's just creepy. He hasn't actually and, done anything. He's just really creepy. He has a, and he does. He, it might be that he has control over it, but he does provide, so to speak. Yeah. And no one's like talking. No, they're not like being social or they're ha they're not even like happy or anything. Yeah, everyone's very... His, his, uh, his meal is much bigger than I was about to say, else's. yeah, he's yeah. got way yeah, more. He gets, mm. he gets a lot. Mm. Which would be like an interesting rule, you know, in the sense of if you're the one who brings back the deer, you get an extra portion, you know, to motivate him to, you know, really go out there and get it. But that's The impression you know, I get is that he just gets the he's bigger He's just the meal leader, yeah. He's in charge. Even though he mm -hmm. kind of looks a little frail, or at least a little gaunt. And I think that was on purpose to make him look a bit more, um, you know, off-putting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, appears to be getting better. They should do a Doctor Reacts to The Last of Us. Uh, that probably already exists. 
I hope it'd be better than like a deer reacts to The Last of Us. <laughs> a deer reaction. That would be very good. Yeah. Live deer reaction. Yeah. It's just a deer sitting in front of his computer, just sort of looking <laughs> around. She's not even watching whatever he's meant to be reacting to. When she shoots it, it's just like, nah, fuck this, tids it off. Yeah. I do not approve of this. Nope. No, that's mm. the point. That's the point when he becomes fully, yeah, sentient and just like, you know what? Bury a deer in a trope. Very, very yeah. offensive. Yeah. Yeah. We always get killed and eaten. That's really fucked up, Hollywood. Crows. <laughs> I assume they're going to do the same thing it's, here. Of It's the spirit of yeah. Jacob. Oh my god, I miss him. We should find out what he's in these days. He's probably in another TV what show. A better TV show. This man's not already dead. He's dangerous. If we bring that girl back with us, she's just another mouth to feed. If we leave her out here, she'll die. Maybe that's God's will. Don't do that shit. I decide what God's will is. No one, but yeah, no one gets to decide what God's will is but me. Ooh. Careful. I am God. Yeah, he's. It's that's... just Troybaker's character seems persistently sad. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the really vibe sad. he has the whole time. Joel, Joel, wake up. Okay. okay Is he pretending to be asleep? No, no, he's just. Oh, no, up. okay. Right. But if anybody makes it down here, you fucking kill them. You got it? Joel. Let's craft a med kit. Yeah, craft a med kit. You have you need uh you need cloth, alcohol, <laughs> and that's What's, um, and real about ten seconds of your time. Do yeah. they have the uh the pistol? What does she have it? Uh, yeah, they should have a she should have a pistol, he should have a revolver. And a rifle as well, I think. And then there's well, the rifle. She has a rifle. Where's her rifle? Yeah. Or is she ditching her guns? Because yeah, I don't know if it was the, she's gonna try and draw them off, right? Like, cause yeah. She foolishly, yeah. being a child, as she does in the game, goes back to Joel without realizing, of course, they will follow her there. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's all follows. Yeah, this this is all solid in terms of just, it's better they chase her than find Joel. Yeah, yeah. well, I totally believe she'd do this, 100%. Yeah. No, other universe Joel. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to shoot that horse. Oof. Man, that I guess they'll Ew. eat the horse. <laughs> like the, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So how was, did he get? I guess he cut through the fence or something. Yeah, he took like a shortcut. I was just thinking like the potential of trying to not have the horse die for use of travel, but then I was like, actually, these people would probably want to eat it asap. Yeah, where are they going to travel to? Exactly. Damn, he's about to execute her. Was he? They clearly said so. That means that they're all in cahoots the to other disobey guys him. Said do it. Yeah, they yeah. all they all liked him on. What do you think that is in terms of? Do you, do you think they don't like him, but they follow him anyway? Well, no. Um, are they trying to spare her? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like a mercy Maybe. kill for Ellie because they don't want to subject her to David. I have a mm. feeling that's what it is. Oh uh, yeah. It was all those looks that each of those guys had that they yeah. focused in on that makes me think that. Yeah. Stay here. Go door to door. Hmm. Oh. Uh. You so hungry for vengeance? Deliver it. My guess is he wasn't always crazy. But he's Something become happened. that way, you think? Something's, something's happened, yeah. So they, they said he went. He was a teacher and he turned into preacher, which would have kept people together in really hard times, right? And then as time goes on, especially with that bigger portion of meal, and he's doing... He, we're going to find out what, but he's doing some extra things that clearly they're, yeah, they're, like they're vaguely aware of. Festering, growing discontent. Yeah. Jimmy's a bad shot. He doesn't even get to have a scope on his rifle. I hope we're heading toward a particular scene. Uh, uh, I think we are. Get up, buddy. Attention to detail with the blood there on the uh, on the mattress. Things. Maybe, that's kind of yeah, what I was trying to say. Oh, well, he's dead. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just gnarly, jeez. Yeah, he just because he's low energy right now. So he's just got to just wait. Stare at him. Damn. That does help it, at least. Like, we still get a sense that he's very sluggish and, like, well, he's still... wheezing as well. Yeah. Now we've split the two up. Joel's got to defend himself here and go, like, where are they going to meet? Are they going to meet this episode? Out of curiosity, Rags, does, is anything in your head playing out in terms of what you're expecting to happen? Not really. I think a whole bunch of stuff could happen. It's so I don't have any um, expectations. It's a fascinating sort of dynamic because yeah. three of us know exactly what's coming. <laughs> and it's it's a relatively famous part of the game. You're a dangerous person. You've certainly proven that. Did you not play the first game, Rags, or not finish it? Or? Not this far, no. Oh, okay.
Did you hear me say the others want to kill you? Yeah. But I stopped them. Fuck you. Why don't we just start with your name? Eat shit. Hey, ah, listen French. to me. <laughs> An interesting there. name. This is a person who desperately wants to manipulate people but just has no job. <laughs> like it's, it's not happening. Or at least not for Ellie, anyway. That part of your life, it's ending. And what I'm offering you is a beginning. If you can't find a way to trust me, then yes, you are alone. It's funny. Sweet, you mean I can be alone without you? Awesome. He's got a different face and voice to the David from the game, but they have captured the important part, so to speak. Well, uh, David in the game was played by Nolan North, so yes, oh. they, definitely different different voice. Well, though Nolan North has like pretty crazy. I know their neighbor. Timothy, okay. Nolan does Nathan Drake and Uncharted for people who don't know. And Desmond in uh, Assassin's Creed and oh. Penguin and oh. So that's, Ew. yeah. I hate to say it, but that's an improvement. We're uh, getting punished Joel here. Joel, Joel gets jumped by two people and then sort of wins the fight in the game. Here he is, set oh, the yeah. trap, which I prefer. Yeah. Oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> here we go. Uh, oh, leave him alone. Oh, you're next. Oh, please. I don't know any girl. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, 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 no. He can't help you. You focus right here, or I'll pop your fucking kneecap off. I like that Pedro's playing this still a bit delirious. Like, uh, he was more put, put together in the game a bit more at this point. Where? Oh, that's sound. What the fuck? Oh, jeez. What town? Silver Lake. You want your kneecaps. That's a thing. It's not a real town name. It's a resort. A resort? You're gonna point to where we are and where your resort is. It'll be the exact same spot your buddy points to. I'm gonna mark it with the blood. Hopefully, oh. he wipes the blood off for the next guy. I feel like That's you should have remember how this goes. <laughs> well, not you, know, Rags. John will. I'll tell you, yeah. I'm not lying. Yeah, because you're right. No. You would need to worry about that no. if he was gonna check. Jesus. No! Oh, right, yeah. No, you're right, Paul. I forgot about that. He told you what you part wanted. Of it. You motherfucker, fuck you. I ain't telling you shit. It's okay. No. I believe him. No. Well, That's why yeah, it's, that just, just yeah. one, it's, it's just one to It's just one to It's really good one, yeah. to just say, like, it's, it's a clever thing. Like, you know, he's already laid the threat. So, as far as he's concerned, he'll probably get the truth out of him first try. He and then, of course, to. it just shows, like, this is Joel. This Joel is scary. Yeah, Joel, uh, gets, very scary. Joel yeah. gets results when, when he wants them. Yeah, when, right. when you are opposed to him, when you're threatening people he cares about, he is terrifying. Yeah. He's bringing back his old smuggler and I just, brutality. Oh my god, I just realized too, like, I'm so tired of torture scenes in TV shows being like, we're gonna, we're gonna shave off a bit of your fingernail, we might just pull it out. He was like, I'm gonna take off your kneecap. Yeah. Like, yes, get to the fucking point, take something they want. Ew. Right. There's an ear on the floor. <laughs> For what it's worth, this is just dear meat, I swear. Oh, gee. <laughs> I trust you. Cut me up into little pieces. I'd rather not. Please well, these are just one-to-one -one lines from the game. What is it? It's dear. With some human helping on the side? No. No, I, I promise. It's just the dear meat. So now what? You gonna chop me up into tiny pieces? <laughs> I'd rather not. I taste terrible. If you I'm all stringy. Judge, judge you? You're eating people, you sick fuck! They were, right, now they, I gotta they, go they, clean it up by the <laughs> ear and everything. It's getting in the ear, ew. Specifically yes. by the ear. But I would've told you. I would've I mean, told you. so yummy. <laughs> I love he says that like a point oh, of yeah, trust. I would've told sorry, you. We, sorry, sorry, we shouldn't have left that ear behind. So Wait, if you're eating resort, people, you why would you take me? the ear off? But what was I supposed to do? Let them starve? These people who put their lives in my hands, who I expect me to keep them safe, who love me? That's a weird thing to say, that last bit. I don't mm. think your friend would either. Didn't he take another man's life to save yours? He was defending himself. He was defending you. No, he was defending All, himself. Both, both of those could be true you simultaneously. You see a lot. So do I. And you know what I see when I look at you? I see ears. Weird, <laughs> I see two ears. Me. Those delicious you ears. Mm -hmm. me. You're a natural leader. You're smart. Loyal. 
violent. He's trying to Why butter her up. He is. Not like that, but I mean like, you know. <laughs> Put that knife of yours in your hand. You'd stick me in a second. I think everybody you would, man. Violent heart. And I should very violent hands. Violet ears. Do you feel like <laughs> these lines are specifically set up for two? Could be. I mean, we're doing that. We're not so different in the thing right now. So. Well, they are, but it's specifically the you're a violent person. Because we haven't seen no. much of that, obviously, at this point in the, the like, in Ellie's story. What does cordyceps do? Is it evil? No. It feeds and protects its children. And it secures its future with violence, if it must. It loves. It loves. Cordyceps loves... Okay, this, I mean, you're losing me here. They need God. They need heaven. They need... Ah, he doesn't believe in these things. They need a father. You're beyond that. I'm a shepherd surrounded by sheep, and all I want is an equal. I can tell the others to stop looking for him. <laughs> you can't tell them anymore. They'll spare him. <laughs> I'd be more talking at them than to them at this point, but... <laughs> yes. If he leaves us in peace, they will just let him go. Is that the offer they here, to like, to, to let him go and, you know, I'll join you if you let him go or something they like follow. that? It does seem like that. It's like, join me and I will spare your friend. But they would kill him anyway. Was Joel he's, wasn't. He's, like, legit okay. trying to offer her, like, queen status, huh? Essentially. Yeah. Think of what we could do to I, I, I slapped the other prospect so she doesn't like me anymore. We'd make this place perfect. Like the game did do this as well, I think. No, it did, uh, it, but this, this they've been alluding to something and they're going to get more overt with it before this ends, I'd imagine. Right. Imagine the life we could give them. Imagine the life we could build. Oh. Oh. You little cunt. You stupid little girl. You are making it very difficult to keep you alive. Let's see what I go tell the others now. What am I supposed to tell the others now? Ellie. What? Ellie. What? Tell them that... Ellie is the little girl that broke your fucking finger! Tell them that Ellie is the little girl who broke your fucking finger! How did you put it? Hmm? Tiny pieces. How did you put it? Hmm? Tiny little pieces? You little cunt. Hey. <laughs> Language. That's a bad word. Very close to the game, this law. Yeah. Pretty close, but at the I, end, so I, I was wondering if she'd like, go along with it for longer. Nope. See where Ellie she is, uh, no, she's, uh, <laughs> she's, she's a fine one. Yeah. Man, he, he is really struggling, isn't he? Yeah. Oh look, it's blued. Blued in the snoo. That'd be from the deer, I suppose. I like that in the show he's playing this like in an, an impaired way. Like in the game, as soon as you play as Joel, you as a player get the sense like, okay, he's 100% now. You know what I mean? Like I can move around, he's I can do all the things. He's pretty normal, yeah. Yeah. He's definitely having to, yeah. He's a little haggard here. Plus. Oh, do you find this Gross. in the game? Oh, Christ. I gotta find her. Wait, wait! Shut up! Wait, 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 wait! Don't! No, I'm infected! I'm infected. And now so are you. Roll on my sleeve. Look at it. Look at it! 
No. This isn't real. That looks pretty I'm immune. Real to me. Ooh. Oh, you killed the one that was maybe. Oh. Interesting. Hey, you got one, though. Yes, well, this uh, is this one to one with the game as well, and like, and it's yeah. just as lucky as the game. <laughs> like it's there's a bit yeah. of plot armor there. You oh could say. well, and also yeah, we're already in the uh, in the restaurant. Goodbye, Joel. Indeed. Yeah. You think that there'd be some cutlery in that kitchen? <laughs> yeah, interesting choice of weapon, Ellie. Oh yeah. Well, here's a stick. Oh, we're already in the restaurant. Wow. Yeah, well, because they're not going to do, like, some crazy encounters with, like, Oh, 50. no, what an incredibly <laughs> inconvenient thing to have just occurred. I feel like he th maybe pulled the kid down before it got to that level, but I That's guess too I late now. Done. I would have pulled it down fast. He's he's sort of... No way out, Ellie. He's, like, keeping an eye on it, like, eh, it's just lock. fire. <laughs> he's just oscillating between, do I deal with this, or <laughs> do I... Oh, well, Man, that fire's getting because, awfully uh, big. He has wow, that fire is burning blocked. quick. Yeah. Yeah. He's even what? doing the evil man thing where he's like, I'm gonna get you. I, there's no way out. He's monologuing. What does start the fire in the game? Because I don't think it's that. Like a stick. I can't remember. How did you do it? It's all right. Nowhere to go. If you want out? You're gonna have to come get these keys. I know you're not infected. No one that's infected fights this hard to stay alive. No one infected fights this hard to stay alive. That's an interesting line. So, I think this. How did you do it? Things to be drawn from that line. No one likes being humiliated, Ellie. You don't know how good I am. Jeez, man, like that's some copium right there. You. <laughs> you see, I changed my mind. I don't believe you. you. A father. So I'm gonna Jesus. keep you. And I'm gonna teach you. Ellie. Oh, don't yell as you're going towards him. Don't do that. I knew you had heart. You know, it's okay to give up. Ain't no shame in it. I guess not. Just not your style, is it? you already knew. The fighting is the part I like the most. Well, let me tell you something. You have no idea what I'm capable of. There's no fear in love. It's okay. 
Okay. It's okay, baby girl. I got you. I got you. Seems like the uh, it would be between this and five for best. I think that was really, yeah, really solid. Yeah, that, that's what comes to mind for me. Either this one or five, I think, is the best. Well, it's just I, that um, these two episodes are the ones that deliver the like thus far the most potent payoffs in the narrative. I think. I, I mean, obviously so? for Ellie in particular, that's like a really that's a really critical moment, and hopefully. At this point, people have sort of abandoned the Bella Ramsey can't act like angle. I I don't get it anymore. That part I haven't was gotten it for particularly. A while. Uh, I would say it's as far as haunting the uh, chopping someone yeah. up to stop not only your own murder but rape as well. And the uh, the look in her eyes as she uh, as she leaves the place as well. It's that thousand yard stare, and then of course the panic, and then sort of you know it's just sort of calming down when she realizes that it's Joel. It, yeah, these it's, are all... it's, at this point, Bella Ramsey's had several, you could say, tests essentially of like how, um, like in terms of performance, um, yeah. and every single time, like with these major moments, yeah, it's just like another another great uh, bit of acting as well as all of the good acting throughout the whole episode uh we said a, f a bit further back I, well at least i said about this episode they've got their blueprint they used it and uh the thing to nail was obviously correcting up all of the ways that everything comes together because the timing is is just everything's slightly different it's, different things are faster different things are slower and you got to get it's the performances right same uh it's a lot of the same beats this episode in particular felt to me like the most clear and apparent parallels between the game and the show there are obviously some deviations between like kind of how david comes across he's a little bit different but it's still like a lot of it's the same and and the like structure of the group and some of the dynamics that were seemingly coming through yeah like, they gave the us some um... it's a lot more uh overtly evil the pieces um, of this David, community, David I think, is reprehensible in both. Yeah, he's a son of a bitch. Like the the community here seem to have been. I, I like thinking about all these different groups that we've come across. This one seems like there were there were good people here, but they've they've become so complacent that it's just like anyone they come across destroyed. enters the meat grinder essentially. Yeah, they've been destroyed by uh by this this world. David's made them rely David. on him. He's like they've all become like weak, scared, and and to you can tell he's probably chanting to them like again and again like you need me. I get you the stuff you need, like, you know, that kind of person. Yeah, how much autonomy do any of these people even seemingly have? They all seem to be completely under his heel. Yeah, uh, which I wonder how long it would have lasted necessarily. I wonder if uh, the more he did what he wanted uh, to with little girls, the more that they chop people up to f for feed, I wonder if they would have overthrown him eventually. I mean, with how they were after uh, they shot the horse, I mean, it looks like they were really getting kind of um, mutinous. You know, you can yeah, imagine it might not have taken long. Over for him anyway. Well, yeah, and I'm just, um, um, I'm really interested by that whole, like, they were almost about to execute her, but he stops them, like, and I, I just assume it's because they know what's going to happen to her. Yeah, it all, it all lines up, doesn't it? Like, and, and then the, the, the daughter of the person who got killed as well, like, it's kind of an implication there too. Well, yeah, the and fact well, that he said, like, you... terrified of him, she's scared of him. Well, didn't, wasn't he saying something like, you know, you, th you think you've lost your father, but, you know, essentially, like, I can, yeah. I can be him for you, which, you know what that means, considering all the context we've gotten. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, he's, he's another pretty strong villain, and, and just a showcase, because we're so far into the story now, of what's left of humanity. That's what I see this story being, you know, about in a lot of ways with a lot of things. Like, Ellie's getting a full sort of taste of all these different kinds of people, getting to the point that it might make her believe that a lot of these 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 horrible sides of humanity can be saved if only they can be taken out of this environment with, like, a cure or something like that, when... Perhaps in reality, this is more so just a realization of the the kinds of people that survive in this environment. Mm -hmm. A whole cavalcade of different personalities, and all of them brought to their wit's end thanks to this scenario. And what what does humanity look like at that point? And her own humanity getting hardcore stripped away. I've always found it just as meaningful as a, as a concept back when it was presented in the game, but here as well. Just that Joel knows how much this is going to have affected her. Sort of thing. He'd, he'd know himself what it would have been like, and the fact that, especially in this show, they focused a bit on uh, how Tommy wanted to abandon him because of the things that he had to do, and mm -hmm. uh, all the people they've lost. Just the, There's a lot of stuff feeding into... I think this moment is one of the biggest, obviously, for the season, uh, that, that rely on everything else we've known. The fact that he calls her baby girl, obviously, the last time we heard him say that was with Sarah as she was dying. This is like a crystallization of 
everything that Ellie means to him and what their relationship is and, and how important that is considering everything else that's happened, right? Like all these different people that have come in and out of Joel's life and all the actions he's had to take, all the humanity that's been stripped away from him. She's a big reason he can have access to things that he thought were lost. He thought like the, the, a lot of this was over. And of course, it's bringing him back to a very, very vulnerable place. That's what uh, he talks about with Tommy uh, in both the game and the show. It's what we saw playing out with Henry and Sam, even though, of course, how their story ended. You know, Frank and Bill having gone the whole way in terms of taking care of each other, relying on each other, and their stories ending together. Tess was another failed sort of thread in Joel's life. And this, this, we were inches away from Joel losing her all over again, right after she had, you know, put everything on the line to save him. And so he catches her in this turmoil where she's had to shred someone who's been that much of a threat to her something that he would have wanted to prevent protect her from so yeah it, it's honestly it's hard to summarize everything that's happening uh in these moments on the subtext as we were talking about earlier like uh if we'd had everything longer in this show up to this point i think this probably would have hit harder but to be honest with you, i think they've they, they did everything they needed to do in this episode i can't really fault them that hard uh, outside of a couple of tweaks i may have made like in terms of just some stretches here and there this episode by comparison if episode seven was thin this episode is very dense yeah like we did every a lot. scene feels dense with information about the characters there's like no scene that is superfluous in this episode like every single scene is essential and yeah, it was one episode to set up material. an entire enemy faction and an enemy leader and then yeah and then to have that all come to a conclusion that feeds into the story of these of these characters of our main duo yeah it was all very tight and then when we got to the part with the restaurant i felt like we're moving really quickly here but then i checked the runtime and i'm like oh no we're about like 45 minutes in here i guess this is this pacing works for this episode um, i think yeah, i expected um, there to be more time at the end but well, yeah what there. Was they, they skipped like combat to just go straight to the like david conclusion essentially because in the game there's a uh, like a decently large stretch of ellie gameplay but i mean yeah that, that's, that's it's what's... hard to it's hard to justify that you know really like in terms of her killing like 15 people before encountering david What's clearly yeah. been uh, cut and replaced is a lot of gameplay for both Joel and Ellie of killing people. And it's just, I was just like, gonna yeah. definitely get the point. Joel is still forced to be reckoned with, even when he's in a bit of a incapacitated state. Uh, yeah, and, I was uh, very Ellie happy with how they adapted that scene as well. Yeah, perfect. The the game does a thing where it makes it feel a lot longer, where you like it kind of shows you Ellie's side of it and it plays it all the way up to like the restaurant bit and then it plays you as it puts you as Joel but then it kind of rewinds time a bit yeah and it shows you like it's quite an elongated sequence of him going into the town and then maneuvering through the town to eventually get to the restaurant and then it catches up with where you saw Ellie in the restaurant felt quick to me this episode but it, I can't like you were saying Muller, I can't fault it for like it, it accomplished everything that it needed to and it was quite tightly bound the whole thing i mean from joel's pov right like he was sure he was dead he knows that she took care of him and then he finds and out that she's been taken dead. and what does he see yeah. when he like first gets there is a bunch of bodies hanging there yeah like and then he finds her a burning building and she's covered in blood it's just yeah it's really solid stuff for the characters not, not a word i mean obviously they do speak to each other but they don't you know like they're both it's just they're both there for each other, and so they're together again, and they can leave this place and move forward. Yeah, One of the comments that, that we talked about um, earlier was in regards to the presence of the infected, and there were no yes. infected in this episode. How interesting yeah. is that? Like, I don't need them, but I like them. <laughs> like, so They're a unique element that's not in anything else. And it would be really nice to see that element in this show because as much as like the Joel and Ellie stuff is really good, it would be nice to have the unique parts of The Last of Us kind of being more present. So what happens uh, in the game meet. when she meets up with uh, David at first is that they're sitting there talking and then they hear an infected practically just runs into the room. It's just like, blah, 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 and then David shoots it with his pistol and she's like, what the fuck? You had a gun the whole time? And he's like, yeah, I did. Like, because, you know, and, and then they defend the area together for about 10 minutes or so from a horde of just a horde of infective just arrive and uh, you know what's funny is this show has the opportunity to you know she shoots the deer and then it, it you know pans off to the side and it shows an infected there it's been alerted and then through the the network it's attached to it brings several and that david and ellie have to defend themselves from let's say six 
something like that we could mm-hmm. have that scene but at the same time you know i just want to be honest it's like we didn't lose anything in terms of character by not having that it was just something that may have been fun because like uh she just never trusts David from the get-go. She seems to, and, and, and it's similar in the game, I think. Ellie just, just something, something doesn't feel right. And I guess the audience would have a similar experience with this man. He's just, and, uh, you know. I think we can do without it. It's not a big deal. I mean, definitely the, the game was trying to do a thing where it's like, oh, maybe David isn't such a bad guy. Oh, maybe David can help me and Joel, like from Ellie's perspective. And then it's like, oh, David followed us back, followed my footprints now I know he's a bad dude. Whereas in this, it's just yeah. like Ellie always suspects the worst of him. And I don't think anything is lost there. That little beat missing. <laughs> I, qu- I quite like the character um, Troy Baker was playing, to be honest with you. The little we got of him. Seemed like yeah. a very conflicted man who's had to do a lot of horrible things. He kept doing them and it led to his destruction. With the burning building and everything sort of being their meeting place that people should have come to investigate. And Joel wouldn't uh, be able to it's, just kind um, of walk away slowly. I think it's a close one that the fire would have alerted people right around the time they're probably leaving. Yeah, it's, I don't see any potential issue, but I if think you, it could Outside as well, ways. it seems there's a bit of a a bit of a smoke screen not a literal smoke screen uh, you know metaphorically speaking with the snow and the the cold it might take a little longer for people to notice the fire yeah i think i would have liked a little bit like a tiny bit at least of like joel having to make his way through a few like hostile people in the village well, uh, if i could be honest on his with you, John, way to the restaurant if this episode could have been two hours long and we just every conversation's extended and we have a couple more interactions and, and we have the infected i know for a fact that i'd enjoy it i'd be like yeah let's do it yeah right. i think so yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't be uh against more episodes yeah if it meant i was just about just to say yeah of these. i think I that's it more, that um, more, the biggest uh, problem the show episodes. has is that it didn't have enough time to breathe you're adapting a pretty lengthy game. The game is fairly long, so adapting it into a season of television, it's like, yeah, you might end up uh, having to shave some stuff down. Da- well, I mean, they have. They've definitely had to shave things down. Like, all of the core critical moments are there for sure, and, like, the broad sections of the game are there, but there's definitely, you know, things that are lost in the interim. Yeah. The town did feel a bit empty in this episode. Contrasting kind of. with the beginning of the episode, where it did establish a sense of community more so than well, yeah, we had the did. two significant scenes of the community in that in that place, but obviously they'd gathered there. I guess they were in their respective houses, or they're out looking for deer potentially. I, I don't really know, but right. um, I think yeah. again, it, it does feel like maybe it would have been neat to have had one or two sort of onlookers being like, "Oh God, what the fuck is it? Oh, geez, just to make it feel like there's more yeah. community uh, tight knit." See, it, it came across to me that that's the point of this guy is that he's kept everyone very close and very dependent on him. Yeah, but uh, very solid, um, I think. Yeah, yeah. I one really of the best am. Of the season. This I would, five. I like. I like five more. I think I prefer five, I I like but five I think this is number well. two. Five is such a complete package. That I wouldn't even criticize it pacing wise. This one, this it could have yeah. maybe used a bit more. But yeah, uh, but I mean, still really a uh, really critical and important character work for particularly Ellie. Yes. I would yeah. say that it, it really goes to show how excellent it feels in a show to have people at real places, proper snow everywhere, they're out in the cold, everything. It's it's very real. The show is extremely yeah, they, believable they really, in terms they really of locations ought to win some places. awards for production. Like, if the production should be, they should be getting some kind of award at the Emmys. Yeah, yeah they got um, great locations. Nothing feels like a set, you know? Yeah, uh, you feel like they're really there doing the thing. Uh, and you, you really buy into it 100%. All the... You know, the prosthetics and everything look good. That's the thing we have to point out now because, you know, even the old Disney with Disney money still green screens the woods. So it it makes you appreciate, you know, the right proper real deal. I just love the fact that volume was supposed to be their their cheat. But even people are still like, no, I can see it. I can tell (laughs) this fake ass shit. (laughs) That ain't no real woods. That's from that's one of them there fakey wood. Hard to get a real tree these days, okay? Yeah, you can't just go out and <laughs> you can't just go out into the woods and film for free. I don't let you do that no more. I don't let you um, do that. That tree is not signed a man, waiver. Ain't it crazy though? Everything rides on next episode. Yeah, one more. episode nine. The finale is kind of make or break. One more, and it's not going to be a two-parter. It's going to be the episode. So, is the it going to be the same length as the rest? Or as far as I know, it's your standards. This has been like forty to fifty minutes, except for the premiere. Right, of course, yeah, and it's possible to tell the rest of the story, so to speak, in that amount of time. 
Just um, every yeah, line, <clears throat> every action, it will be scrutinized. And, uh, will nightmares be brought to life? Who knows? Are you uh, concerned that they might be pressed for time with this next episode? Um, you're quite familiar with the ending of The Last of Us 1, right? Because it came up so much when we were talking about Last of Us 2. Yeah, yeah. It's the concern of uh, just how evil will they make Joel's decision? Because everyone thinks that well, they're going to make him the bad we... guy. Well, it's just the the difference is The Last of Us originally there's no way that they were writing that with like clear ideas of what the sequel was going to be because the sequel was like seven years removed and of course the recontextualization of a lot of you know the changes that were made into to kind of like change it into the story that they needed it to be but they couldn't do it this time around two already exists and they're making it for this show and they probably knew they were getting a second season so it's 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 like it's surely going to be different from the game like surely well i think they didn't know they were going to get a second season until after season one was in the can yeah but you but, can edit season but, one you know. to end <laughs> and also set up season two sure so that's and in terms of rewriting it yeah even if they didn't get their second one it's like well you can plant the seeds uh in a way that the first game simply doesn't yeah what two. what yeah. i don't want to see is that the fireflies follow through on their deal that they're really friendly that the science shows that it's an absolute guarantee that ellie understands that and that she agrees and that uh it, she finds that's going to kill her and that she's on board with that in, in exchange for something that the fireflies have already shown they can absolutely disseminate to the world which would be absurd you know what i mean just knocking out all yeah, of the yeah. arguments and then being like all right bye joel and then he goes you know what no i like her too much and just machine guns down every innocent doctor <laughs> just like it's just like yeah. oh please he don't fights, do that yeah, he guns down hordes of zebra herds of them in order to yeah. get to all the doctors yeah well and that's the other and, thing right all eyes will be crazy. on the the main doctor holding that syringe is like are they gonna be set up last of us too are they gonna be, gonna be like <laughs> hello mr sir we're all very nice friendly people here you, you wouldn't imagine, kill us would you could you imagine if the uh if we actually had a, a cold open and it was him with the zebra could you imagine? right <laughs> oh my God. what a, this is what i mean open. like it'll depend on who writes it i mean our weakest episode was neil alone well so. i'm hoping yeah, that it can go through a Craig Mazin filter and he can be like, oh no, no, we wouldn't do it that way. We wouldn't just we wouldn't just show him saving a zebra and then be like, look how nice <laughs> this man is. Ridiculous. Yeah. It'll be like a whole it'll be like a, a herd of puppies. Not to say, of course, the writing's been perfect. <laughs> it's just that yeah, there's just so many mistakes that can be evaded and uh I just I don't know what's gonna happen. I, all bets are off, genuinely. I don't know what they're gonna do exactly. Mm. Uh because remember Neil was a big part of this production, and so he knows. Yes, he, he, was. he knew when making this, when he was dealing with it, he knew. On set, he was like, all right, here comes the seed. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> hopefully, hopefully Greg was there going, Rubbing his hands together like, hmm. <laughs> No, Neil, no, they hated it. They hated it what, so Craig's much. Craig's like, you know what? The It's like, what do you think about The Last of Us 2? Neil asked him. He's like, um... You know, like, <laughs> you know, what That's a movie. Kind of anyway, man, your ideas like, about the cycles of violence, game. they're just so true. Violence begets oh, violence, please. you know? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But what do you but, think of the game? <laughs> but I have some notes <laughs> on that. He's like, we're going to have to change it when we adapt it for TV. Well, you know that. Uh, he's like, yeah. I'm just wondering it because there was that line when Dave was like, oh, you're violent. The impression I get is that is a line that they're specifically trying to set up, like, Two. That's what I get from that line. Is it trying to right. say, you know, Ellie is capable of of uh of causing great harm potentially? That that's yep. they're trying to set that up as a, a seed. So I feel like it's safe to assume that if we are getting The Last of Us two in season two, which we are, it's still going to be like the core. It's just it's going to be the same broad story. So it's a matter of what changes are you going to make to that story, or alternatively, what changes are you going to make here? To make that more coherent, because I think you know that it I doesn't work I think they got it. They well. know they have to change a lot so that people do not turn the fuck on this show. They still haven't paid off the fact that she can't swim, and that's going to no, result. No, they haven't. They haven't. So she's not going to be able to swim, and and it's going to cause a problem in the next episode that'll lead to her getting she's knocked stuck out on an island. Surely. Which means I think I think the 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 odds are high that she'll be unconscious for the decision. It's. At least somewhat. Of course, you can change it so that she's unconscious, saved, and then conscious. It's like, you know, you could just do it like that. But, nah, but why go to that well. effort, you know? Like, why put that in there instead of just leaving it out? So it makes me think, like, surely she should be unconscious. And then I was like, surely the Fireflies will welch on the deal and boot Joel out. Are they really going to change that? And if you have those two in there, we're golden, I think. 
Did they set up in the show the fact that she can't swim? Yes. I can't remember that. I will play the clip now. I don't know how to swim. Seriously? You think we have pools in the QC? No, smart ass. <laughs> yep, there it is. Yep. That's an important setup for one of my favorite beats in, at the end of this story, like in the game, where Joel falls into the bus. And it's like, oh my god, we're right at the end. And it's like Joel yeah. has fallen into this trap where it's like, oh god, it could all end here very grimly. And it's really scary with all the f like water flowing into the bus and he's like tr pinned at the end of it. And he's like, oh fuck. I, I really like that part in the game. Um, well, they got, what, like 50-ish minutes or so to, to tell that, that selection of the game. So we'll yeah. have to see what they choose. I imagine Wonderful we'll see video. Ellie reacting to giraffes. Like, we got to do that, right? Yeah, I think they will do that. For the giraffe, look, for sure. I yeah. hope they don't look bad. I Unless hope they so spring too. for real giraffes. Do it. They could, but... Yeah. If they get oh, actual yeah. giraffes from Africa, if they ship them over, if they fly them through, if they send them by train and all their heads are <laughs> just poking just up. Like they did in like Madagascar when they're all stuck in the crates. Like, get yeah. shipped over. Yeah, yeah, and he's all bent up in a pretzel and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll be like Jurassic would... Park, where it's, what do you call it, like an animatronic thing? Like a big robot giraffe. Uh, <laughs> well, they just have a sock puppet, like a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With oh, the googly exactly. eyes on it. They use yeah, force exactly. perspective to make exactly. it look like the sock yeah. puppet is just a giraffe really far away. Yeah. Hey, Joel and Ellie, I'm a giraffe. I'm just here going on my adventures oh, through this shit, city. Joel, they talk. <laughs> It's like, yeah, we do. like giving They're it a evolving. Spot. Kill them. <laughs> revolving and he's like, <laughs> mm, I'm watching you, giraffe. And the giraffe's like, I'm watching you, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is a foul mouthed giraffe. Yeah, he's like, yeah, come down here and say that to my face. And don't mess with that guy who's named my zebra friend over there, and it's oh. a zebra song. <laughs> okay, because of the doctor, yeah. man. Please let him be I swear Joel. to God, dude. Imagine there's a scene in the next episode where it's like, it's like everyone's shaking hands and introducing themselves and stuff, and it's like, just Firefly Marlene is there, and everything's like, and then this girl walks up and shakes Joel's hand, she's like, I'm Abby. And you're like, oh yeah. my god! <laughs> yeah. You know the second, I, man, I wonder what they're gonna do for season two. Because yeah. they know, they know that people fucking hate <laughs> Last of Us 2 story and characters. Just a little bit, so, yeah. Oh man, what are they gonna do? I'm so curious. What are they is the question well this is the thing if it was, you have to change imagine it was adapted lot. one to one john you'll finally have to have the conversation with us about the last of us too. <laughs> you know, in the first in the first episode like everyone will turn on the show instantly yeah it'll yeah. They'll literally it repeat will the apocalypse for this ip why would you do that i would imagine that there are some guys at hbo like look guys creative freedom yes yes but <laughs> yeah but this let is me make a counter argument you have to creative like, freedom <laughs> And Let's call this creative freedom asterisk. Like, guys, Spider-Man, God of War, they all sold better than- Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> sold better than your game, alright? We saw the numbers, and we, we yeah. just have some notes, alright? I'd like to show you some comments <laughs> from fans. Like, the, the, see? <laughs> Do you understand? Like, but sir, all this note like... says is no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are they gonna do in the finale? That's- I hope That's it, it. everything I rides really, on it. I don't know. I I hope it's good, but I don't know what it looks like. I I legitimately don't know what to expect. I have no clue. Until then, but I guess folks. We'll find out next week. Yeah. Thanks for watching. That was episode eight of the Last of Us TV show. One left to go. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you next See time. Everybody. Bye, Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. See you hey, next boy. week. What'd you bring me? <laughs>